Our city is Venice, the city on water. The total area of Venice is 160 square miles, but the area covered in water is around 97 square miles. The infrastructure that we chose was water. In the 20th century alone, Venice has sunk by around 23 centimeters. The rising sea level stress in Venice is, it is sinking at the rate of 0.12 centimeters per year. And studies indicate that Venice will sink by around 53 centimeters by 2100. And the land subsidence is around 12 centimeters observed over the past decade. Studies reveal that the urbanization, land planning, and city government leadership levels and adequate countrywide leadership is required in the areas of sewage system planning, agricultural runoff planning, and dredging. There is no actual sewage system built in Venice. As of 1996, 7,000 tons of nitrogen and 1,000 tons of phosphorus were discharged into the lagoon each year. Two main region uh, sources of pollution in the Venice, Venice Lagoon. Uh, the large areas of the lagoon catchment takes fertilizer runoffs from agricultural land, which has led to large areas now being incapable of supporting fish due to the high growth of uh, nitrophytic algae. And the second key source of uh, pollution in the city is due to the annual 2.8 million tourist visits each summer. Despite the fact that Venice um, faces a lot of unique challenges, they are adapting in the face of climate change um, already. There are a bunch of different programs already in action. One of the most unique ones we found is actually a partnership between a private entity and the city itself. They tend to take a preservation-based approach to maintenance within the city. So whenever Venice has these high flooding occurrences, they're the ones who actually go in and will clean up. As part of this too, they have a lot of groundwork within the city itself, which they use to gather data. So the adaptation responses from the city have been of varying kinds. In ancient times, uh, Venetians would adapt to the flooding and sea level rise by deconstruction of the buildings and raising the pavements through permanent construction. And this was further replaced by watertight steel gates. Using the watertight steel gates with gaskets at the steps increased the flood resistance to another 0.2 meters only. One of the adaptive measures that they employed is the Mose project. And basically how it works is that it's, the, it's these gates when the tides rise too high. What it does that is that it introduces a whole set of other problems, which is when those gates are closed, a lot of industry cannot function because ships, particularly shipping, cannot work there. At this point, we would like to discuss the different levels of governance in Venice. The key agencies that support in and initiate climate change mitigation adopt, uh, adaptation responses are the Ministry of Public Works, uh, Venice, Venice Water Authority, also known as MAV, Ministry of Transport and Ministry of Environment. As you can see, there are uh, different kinds of laws that these guys have implemented over the past as a mitigation response, of which uh, we, we are speaking about dredging and uh, geological injections. So from 1988 to 2003, 57 dredge islands have been created. However, the elevation of these dredge islands is about only 0.5 meters, which means that they are flooded during high tides. The geological injections, um, the studies from uh, Titney, which in 2011 indicate that the land uplift as underground fluid injections for raising the surface has existed for almost half a century right, uh, by now, for, uh, for now. But the rate of injection process is um, slow and it takes a long time for the land subsidence to sa stabilize. Certain limitations that are faced during mitigation are uh, that the systems are rigid, a lot of bureaucracy. Fragmentation and gaps overlaps in between the responsibilities of these different kinds of uh, governance structures. Then there is lack of actual implementation and enforcement of key planning aspects by the planning and environmental legislations. So does Venice need adaptation or mitigation? Definitely adaptation. So we've chosen to help bolster Venice's adaptation plans. As you can see, Venice is very sensitive and has a lot of unique issues. That mostly right now they are dealing with them at the city level. And as we talk about with our policy mechanisms, we would like to see that expanded to a regional level. So we would like to see the integration of this data for broader and more proactive applications, which we will address in our policy mechanisms. The policy mechanisms for implementation of our policy response is that there's a greater need for coordination between agencies and legislations. There is need for more involvement from the private sector and the need for comprehensive strategy that involves the entire country rather than simply citywide governance. 
Venice needs an integrated water resource management committee. It has been implemented in different cities, especially coastal megacities around the world. It aims to ensure that there's a coordinated management between different aspects of water issues, like water quality, land management, as well as habitat protection. We also propose an integrated coastal management committee. One of the largest problems we found is that, you know, a lot of water use issues, and especially when dealing with the region to the north of Venice, where the river actually flows down into the river, is that there's not a surveillance system for agricultural practices, which are in turn affecting the lagoon and the health of the water system there. We would like to integrate for a regional support of Venice, in addition to the already existing national support and the measures that they're taking as, as a city. These, in turn, are also going to help diversify the Venetian economy and kind of not take it away from tourism, but just make it a little bit more resilient.